So hi, everyone. Um, we're very privileged to have uh, Nicole Levina here with us today, Dr. Nicole Levina. Um, she's a research psychologist and neuroscientist who is an expert in the field of nutrition, diet, and addiction, and in particular, sugar addiction, which is most relevant for our community. She has a PhD in psychology and neuroscience from Princeton. Um, she has a postdoctoral fellowship at uh, Rockefeller University, and she currently um, has a faculty position at Mount Sinai School of Medicine. Um, welcome, Dr. Avina. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, so sugar addiction. Um, obviously, in our community, that's one of the first things we teach people is saying the first thing you need to do is elim eliminate sugar from your, um, from your diet, right? But right. that is a lot easier said than done for a lot of people. Um, and there's a yeah. lot of talk about sugar addiction as being a real addiction. And there's a lot of people that scoff at it and say, it's not, it, that's not an addiction. The addiction applies to heroin and cocaine and stuff like that. And that sugar is just a food. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a lot of research that's gone on on this topic of sugar addiction and food addiction. And I think that you're right, that there is still some controversy around this idea that, you know, how could a food like sugar be addictive? We tend to think of addictions to things as being, you know, drugs of abuse or maybe gambling, or something that's, you know, detrimental to our health, detrimental to our well-being. But there's been so many studies that have been conducted over the years that really do support this idea that sugar can be addictive. It meets all the criteria that's laid out to diagnose an addiction in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. And there's really just been a growing literature in this area over the past several years that supports this idea that in many cases, sugar can be addictive and have addictive qualities. Okay, so um, I have heard talk about um, sugar being more addictive than cocaine and stuff like that. Is that just a bit of scaremongering or is it is it actually really truly really the case yeah you know i personally don't think that any substance is more addictive than another i think it, there's a we have to remember there's a lot of individual differences that go into addiction and so for instance sugar could be more addictive to me than cocaine but Cocaine could be more addictive to you than sugar. Okay. So I think we need to account at the personal biology and the individual differences that occur when it comes to something being addictive. I think that the idea is that sugar and cocaine can similarly activate the brain systems that are associated with addiction. And in some animal model studies that have been conducted, it's been found that rats will actually prefer sugar when they have a choice between consuming sugar or consuming cocaine. And so I think that's where a lot of that sort of buzz came from in terms of sugar being more addictive than cocaine. Okay. I think they're both equally addictive. It just depends on the individual and the different situation that's going on in terms of, you know, whether or not someone is more likely to become addicted to one over the other. Right. So, um, I think maybe just as a as a bit of a backdrop, um, I um, I'm originally from South Africa, and so obviously um, Professor Tim Noakes is uh, um, a, a big hero to me as well. And I think most of the people in this community are aware of this massive um, lawsuit that he was involved in. But I was watching the whole his whole presentation of of all the the science that that he he really wanted to present, and during that presentation, he mentioned um, this world-renowned um, authority on sugar addiction, um, Dr. Nicole Levina. And I thought, hey, I need to find out who this person is and get them to come <laughs> to one of our conferences. So I searched around and tracked you down, and eventually we were able to find a way for you to agree to come to um, our event in San Diego. But then you got on, you're about to get on a plane, and everything got cancelled, and um, it was a shame that you weren't able to be there. In fact, I 
I hated to go back up on the stage and tell everybody that you weren't going to be able to make it. I thought they were going to start throwing things at me. Oh, uh, well, was, I'm sorry. I, I was no, no. sad to miss it because no. that was one of the, it's actually the first time in my career where I've had to miss a scheduled presentation. I'm, <laughs> so I was like frantic trying to figure out how I could get to San Diego, but I'm really excited that I'll be able to join you again in San Diego for next year. And I'll yeah. be sure to be there a few days early so we don't have any <laughs> travel snafus. Make sure we don't have that problem. Them again yeah i really appreciate it and then you even agreed to come and speak at our east coast event in january in west palm beach um yes i'm looking forward to that too it'll certainly be great to be in the warm weather since i'll be coming from new york so i'll enjoy the company and also you know the environment as well it's really going to be a good event yeah that's how it i mean we called it the keto getaway last year and, and the main idea was for it to have be somewhere warmer with some people from the the Midwest and you know the North where it's all freezing cold that they could come down and have a weekend where it was at least a bit more pleasant weather for the weekend. Um, so yeah, just for, for people uh, who, who want to know about it, um, we're going to have, um, I, once I, put, I post this out, I'll, I'll put comments at the bottom with the links and that to where you can go, but all you need to do is look up Low Carb USA or Low Carb Conferences or something like that and you will find a link to, to the event both in West Palm Beach in January and our one at the end of July next year in San Diego. And, um, you know, there's a bunch of other really um, top scientists and renowned speakers from around the world, really, that come to speak at these events. And we really encourage you guys to come and, and learn about it. Um, particularly, in, you know, in this particular instance, if you're one of those people that wants to and sees the benefits of, of uh, in embracing this lifestyle, whether it's just for health or whether it's you suffering from some kind of, of um, chronic disease that, that this could help, but you're unable to stick to it because you can't get off the sugar, then I'm assuming in your talk, you're going to talk about the mechanisms of sugar addiction, but I, um, I'm kind of hoping that you'd be able to address some of the things people can do um, to actually try to beat that addiction. Is that something that you address? Yes, it is. It's something I'll plan to talk about because I think it's helpful to understand the biology and sort of the psychology behind how sugar can be addictive. And I also think then the sort of next step is, okay, well, what can I do about it? Yes, I recognize it may be an addiction. So how do we deal with that. And so I'm going to offer lots of different tips and suggestions on ways in which you could approach it and try to manage this from the standpoint of looking at it as an addiction. Wow, that's awesome. I think there's so many people that, that uh, really, really need this information. So I'm super stoked that you're going to be able to make it to both our events next year. And I really, really look forward to, to meeting you. And like you said, hopefully we don't have any more weather problems and stuff. So yeah, me too. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time, Nicole, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, thanks. All right, bye.